Pune is a very famous IT city in the western state of India, which is Maharashtra. In the 18th century, Pune was famous for its wadas. These wadas uh, were the places where people used to stay in a small close-knit community. In the early 90s came the British and then the city was expanded to places like Deccan Gymkhana, Ferguson College and Shivaji Nagar. And then in the late 90s came the IT boom where Pune redefined itself as an IT giant city. And then places like Hinjewadi IT Park, Harapsar, Magarpatta, all these different places came into life and one thing which continuously kept changing was the amount number of people the sheer number of people which came into the city and with growing demand of these people coming in the you know the people coming for jobs people coming for good opportunities the city needed growth and that's why today after 200 years Pune has completely transformed from a close-knit wadas to high-tech cities in IT parks and uh, the, the boundaries of this whole city has expanded to kilometers outside and why it was done it was done to accommodate the huge number of people who have chosen Pune as their favorite city to stay and do the job why I'm telling you all this because I love Pune it is my city I have worked here I came here as a struggler I found my job I lost my job here I then again got my job here I got married in Pune my wife is from Pune, so I love Pune, okay? So, why I'm telling you all this is, uh, today's topic is IPv6 addressing. We will understand why we needed IPv6 addressing in a bit, but the story goes the same. When the internet, ca uh, internet came in, all the people who thought that IPv4 addresses uh, were sufficient enough for all the devices across the globe uh, were proven wrong. And we, we needed a new mechanism to identify new devices. And for that came IPv6. So in this video, we'll understand what is the basic difference between IPv4 and IPv6. We will also understand a mathematical concept which will come very handy to you in your exams, in your interviews, which is decimal versus hexadecimal versus binary how these uh, different uh, numbering system connect with each other and hexadecimal directly connects with IPv6. So we'll understand that. And lastly, we'll cover the basics of IPv6 addressing model. So by the end of this video, I hope you will be much more comfortable understanding IPv6 because on the surface, it could be very complex just by the look of it. So if you are new, please consider subscribing. And if you get any value at the end of this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. So let's get started. So friends, let's understand what are the basic difference between IPv4 and IPv6 address. And if you have not watched my video where I have explained IPv4, I think you must check it out. That will give you a very good context coming to this video. So IPv4 is the traditional way of uh, splitting IP addresses across different devices. It is a 32-bit address. It is denoted by dotted decimal notation, something like this, 192.168.25.3. If you see, there are total 4.3 billion addresses right now, and no, we have not we are not fully done with IPv4. We are still using IPv4 by various mechanisms. Okay, we are using subnetting, we are using masking, we are also using NAT. All those kind of things we are using, and still IPv4 is uh, you know is well in use, but it will get exhausted. Every octet is uh, you know there are four octets, and every octet is four bits, so that makes it a 32-bit address. Okay, overall. So yeah, this is the basic structure of IPv4. When we come to IPv6, the bits increases significantly to 128 bits, okay? But you might not see it that big, but the real magic happens because it is hexadecimal uh, notation. It is not, you know, a dotted decimal notation. So we'll understand that in the next part, why it is so significant. And it is around like if you if you uh, if you go with the IPv6, it is 3.4 into 10 to power 38 addresses, which is I think 3.4 340 undecillion addresses. Every device in the world on this planet Earth uh, could have an IP address, a publicly available IP address. We have so many uh, in IPv6, so there is no problem of exhaustion. There is no problem of ending of this capacity. It's huge. So within uh, IPv6, we have the phenomena. We have the concept of hexted. Here we have octets, four octets. Here we have eight hextets. So basically the notation which we use in IPv6 is alphanumeric 
hexadecimal notation. Now, don't worry about it. I'll explain you hexadecimal in a bit. But you would see something like this when you will see a, a IPv6 address or a simplified version of this, which we'll cover again uh, in the later part of the video. But just see that these are, this is called as one hextet. So this is one hextet. So if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So total eight hextets we have, okay? And within these hextets, okay? Within these hextets, this is called as one bit, okay? And this one, uh, you know, one bit of hexadecimal notation is, <coughs> is uh, equal to 16 binary bits, 16 binary bits. One hexabit, one hexabit is equal to 16 binary bits. The conversion happens like this. So this is 16. So just to use the space properly, I'll just take this particular uh, hextet uh, on top. So I'm just talking about this one for now. So 2001. Okay, this is one hextet. In this one hexet, this is called as one hexabit, which is equivalent to four binary bits. Okay, so in total, th these are four hex bits. Okay, so four hex bits equals to 16 binary bits. Okay, so this is actually total to 14 binary bits. Uh, sorry, 16 binary bits, my bad. Four into four, 16. Four bits. So four, 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 four. It is called, it is total 16 binary bits. And how many total hextets we have? Eight. So how many total binary bits we will have? Eight into 16. So total 128. So this is how it gets converted. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll understand this whole structure in detail. But yeah, this is the basic uh, difference between IPv4 and IPv6. Now let's understand uh, decimal versus binary versus hexadecimal in bit more detail although it is not the core essence of this uh, topic uh, but it is interesting to know that mathematically so that you don't get confused so i'll cover that as well so friend this section you have to pay close attention and understand that this can get a bit complex and confusing so play pay very close attention and understand i am just giving you this particular section as a top up understanding okay even if you understand a bit of it it's sufficient to understand ipv6 so we have basically three types of numbering system. Decimal works on the power of 10, okay? 10 to the power 0, 10 to the power 1, 10 to the power 2. So for example, if we have to write in decimal four, uh, 453, we will write 4 into 10 to the power 2, 5 into 10 to the power 1, and 3 into 10 to the power 0. So it, uh, you know, it is ones, it is tens, it is 100, then 1000, then 10,000, like that. This is our human readable form. But obviously, you know, uh, when computer came in, we wanted to have binary, 0 and 1. And that's where we came to binary, okay? But hexadecimal sits in the between because it gives you a compact version of denoting binaries. Because if you, if you try to denote binary in decimals, it becomes very, very, uh, you know, because binary, a decimal takes a lot of space, you cannot compress and show it. And that's why you have the decimal number 0 to 9 and then you came up with another system which is hexadecimal, which is alphanumeric in nature where you start from 0 till 9, it is exactly similar to that. Uh, to that. And then we have extension to A, B, C, D, E, F to, do, uh, to denote till 15. And hexadecimal works as a 16 to the power 0, 16 to base 16. It is base 16 number. Okay, you have to understand this and binary obviously has base 2. So anything starts with 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3 for example. So if you have a number as 0 here in decimal, in hexadecimal also it will be 0 and in binary how you will achieve 0? You will have, you have to put 0, 0, 0, 0 in all the four uh, uh, sections. Okay, for example, uh, let's take, uh, I'll, I'll take some random, so let's take 5. Okay, so how we will achieve 5 here? Just see. So we can do 4 plus 1, 5. So what it will be? It will be 0, 1 because we need a 4, then 0 and then again a 1. 0, 1, 0, 1 equals to 5. So this is how it works. And then if you have a 10, for example, okay, which is, uh, you know, which is A in hexadecimal. So how you will achieve 10? 8 plus 2, 10. So that's why I have kept 1. 0, 1, 0. So we got an 8 here and then we have got a 2 here. So 8 plus 2, 10. So in this way, decimal versus hexadecimal versus binary works. And you have to understand, we talked uh, in the, you know, in the previous section that 
वन यू नो वन हेक्सा डेसिमल बिट इज इक्वल एंड टू फोर ऑफ दीज बिट सो दैट्स बाय यू कैन यूज इट वेरी इजिली ओके यू कैन यू नो यू कैन यूज इट वेरी वेरी इजिली सो इफ यू टेक अ रैंडम नंबर इन हेक्सा डेसिमल फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन ए एफ सो इन ऑर्डर टू कैलकुलेट द डेसिमल ऑफ इट एट यू नो एट दिस प्लेस वी हैव सिक्सटीन टू दी पावर टू सो वी विल वी विल टेक दिस वन वन इंटू सिक्सटीन टू दी पावर टू प्लस ए वॉट इज ए ए इज टेन सो टेन इंटू सिक्सटीन टू दी पावर वन प्लस एट दिस प्लेस वी हैव एफ F denotes 15. So 15 into 16 to the power 0, which is 1. So what comes? 16 to the power 2 is 256 multiplied by 1 is again same number. So 256 plus 10 into 16. 16 to the power 1, 16. So 256 plus 160 plus 15 into 16 to the power 0, which is uh, 15, right? Because 16 to the power 0 equals to 1. So 256 plus 160 plus 15 k comes to 431. So 431 in decimal, okay, can be denoted by 1 AF. So this is how uh, you know decimal notations uh, uh, and hexadecimal notations and binary notations work. So with this basic understanding of uh, decimal, hexadecimal, and binary, now let's understand the IPv6 addressing model. Everything about IPv6. So let's take this particular IP address to understand in more detail how we can uh, put the notations around it, how we can denote it, how we can even compress it. So number one thing is that we don't have subnet mask in IPv6. We use slash 64 notation to denote how many bits are dedicated to network because it is such a huge. Uh, Uh, IP address range. We simply just do a 50% split. So slash 64 means 128 bits are in total. If you divide it by two, that's 64 bits. So 64 bit 50% is uh, dedicated to uh, network bits, and this 50% is given to the host bit. The second important thing is how to reduce the complexity of reading such long, IP, uh, you know, IPv6 addresses. So there are some global rules which have been implemented. The number one is that you can omit the leading zero. So if you have a zero here, so two zero zero one colon zero db eight. So you can reduce this. And the second one is any continuous block of zeros. Okay, if you have uh, continuous blocks of zeros, then that could be simply denoted. By a colon, okay. But the caveat is, you can only do it once throughout uh, this particular uh, IP address. You can't do it multiple times. So you can only do it once. So if you have to rewrite this address again, we will write two zero zero one colon db eight because we have omitted this. Then simply colon because we are just reducing this, okay, and then. C one 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 colon B two 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 colon A three 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 colon D E F. So this is somewhat you know somewhat better than than the last one. Okay. So this is very important uh, notation because it compresses it and it makes it easier for humans to read. The third thing which you need to know is out of these 64 bits which are dedicated for network, generally this 16 bit is dedicated for subnetting. So if you have to draw subnets, you can use it using this particular these 16 bits within uh, the total range of uh, 64 bit. Okay. So now this is the basic structure. Now we can uh, we can quickly understand different type of IPv6 addresses uh, which uh, which are in use today. Okay. So let's understand those. So guys, while there are other types as well, I consider these three uh, are the primary ones which you need to know and then you can explore further. So first one is global unicast, which has a global routing prefix. So any de device. Uh, on the internet which is connected to uh, the internet using a public ip address for example will have this uh, global unicast ip address okay so for example in your house if you're using ipv6 you will definitely have all the devices which are connected will have a global prefix and that global prefix is generally from here till uh, till here okay so first 48 bits Okay, these forty-eight, four, four, four. Okay, so uh, this one bit is like I, I explained you, right? Sixteen bits. Okay, one, uh, one hexa bit equals to four. So this is one hexet, and this one hexet equals to sixteen bits. So sixteen, sixteen, sixteen. So sixteen three is a 
16 threes are 48. Okay, so the first 48 bits which you have are called are, are used for your global prefix. That prefix will be common across all your network which is connect, connected to public internet and it is a routable address which means using this address you can go and connect to uh, an external uh, network or a public internet the second one is unique local address which will be mostly used in companies and organizations and it is uh, equivalent to your private uh, uh, you know private ip and it it uses slack which is stateless automatic configuration auto configuration wherein the device within that particular network will automatically uh, get one ipv6 address so you actually if you see if you uh, if you know dhcp dynamic host configuration protocol uh, that is not used completely with IPv6. Some of the functionality is still used, but the basic functionality can be used uh, for assigning uh, the IP address for unique local address. This is not routable. This is within the private network. If we are talking about a private network, then uh, you will have your IPv6 using Slack. Okay, uh, this is not at all routable, guys. Link local address is again used for initial configuration suppose you are bringing a, a router into a particular network so for that initial configuration setup uh, we uh, assign uh, you know we assign link local address within that particular uh, router as a set of initial setup okay once it is configured completely it will either use a global unicast or a unique local address so yes guys and another important point is we uh, ipv6 provides unicast uh, multicast uh, addresses as well okay but it does not entertain broadcast it has multicast it has many cast it has unicast but it does not entertain broadcast addresses okay but broadcast means sending everything to everyone within the network so that is something which ipv6 does not entertain as per my knowledge correct me if i'm wrong but this is what i know uh, so yeah you need to keep that in mind so yes guys this brings us to the end of this video after a long time i made a video uh, in so in so much detail going into the network addressing and all that let me know if you got any gist out of it just to rephrase ipv6 is the future it provides us so many different ip addresses that we need not to worry about ip addressing anymore and yes with all the different uh, benefits it provides i think in next 10 years 15 years uh, down the line almost every one of us will be very very acquainted and very very comfortable in seeing ipv6 addresses and using it so friends i hope you like this video if you do please hit the like button hit the subscribe button and let me know your thoughts and comments what you would want to learn next on the channel we make it interesting for everyone so until next time guys keep learning keep sharing all your knowledge and yes keep hustling bye for now